mm-hmm. today we are going to implement a free shipping threshold notice in the Dawn theme slide out cart. Check the description below for a link to the code on GitHub, or if you prefer to follow along at blog form, there's a link to my website as well. But let's get started. So to see what we're building today, uh, you can see I have a cart here, and if I go down to one product, I have this message that says $470.05 until you hit free shipping um, with $629 in the cart. I have the threshold for free shipping set to $1,100. So if I add another one of these to cart, I exceed that threshold, and now I get this message saying, congratulations, you've reached free shipping. So let's talk about how to build this. Shopify's Dawn theme utilizes web components for the slide out cart. Um, if you've never used web components, um, if you've worked in React before, it's kind of a similar concept. But essentially, we are able to define classes that extend this HTML element class. And then from there, we are able to encapsulate our CSS, JavaScript, and then use the Shadow DOM to reference and manipulate this quite easily in our liquid code. So if we look at the existing cart.js file, you'll see class cart items and a few things going on here. The main things to know, if you're familiar with JavaScript, the constructor is called when the uh, class is instantiated, and this connected callback is a um, callback that is called when the element is actually referenced in the HTML, or in this case, liquid code as well. So we're going to try to follow this convention um, as best we can. And we're going to start by creating a section file. And I'm going to call it uh, free shipping countdown. Now, I'm using a section because I want to the end user, uh, which I'm assuming will always be a non-technical merchant, to reference this in the customizer. However, there's a strong case that I would use um, the uh, config files and have this as an additional setting. And um, I'll be sure to walk through that at the end as well. The first thing we want to do here is define our schema. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it free shipping countdown. And in the settings, I am going to add an ID here. I'll call it and a type of text where this is going to be where the user, the merchant, types in the number or the dollar amount of that the threshold will be specified as. And then for label, um, I am just going to say set the amount of dollars for free shipping. And just to be clear, no dollar commas. OK, great. So now we can get rid of these tags. And then we're going to go and put some JavaScript in here. So let's first create a script tag. And we're going to define our class called free shipping countdown. We're going to extend that HTML element like we saw in the cart.js. We're going to define a constructor. Oops. And we're going to call super, which we'll call the constructor on the parent class. And then we will use this attach shadow mode open. Now this is some boilerplate code that is used for or necessary because we're using the shadow DOM to insert some HTML. And then we're going to define the connected callback function or method, which if you remember is called when our HTML, uh, in this case, is inserted into the DOM. And we are going to first, we're going to create some event listeners, and then we want to init that method so that those uh, event listeners are set right away. And then we also want to call this function, which we are going to create. So let's go down and um, create these. First, I'm going to create the event listener. So and I'm going to add, oops. Okay, now we've defined our event listeners and we have it set here. We're waiting for this event called cart updated. Now, if we look in cart.js, 
um, there is no event currently being emitted by that name. Um, so we are going to go in and create it. Now this is one thing that differs greatly depending on your theme. Um, a lot of themes I've worked on have event listeners, or excuse me, they emit events for cart events already. So if you do a global search in your code for events like cart added or changed or updated, things like that, very common. And so you can check and see if your theme has those already. In this case, after we finish up this class, we're going to go in and create these event emitters. And now that we've created event listeners, let me made a typo here. Let's go in and create our update free shipping countdown. So we're going to do a few things here. So I'm going to create another function here, and I'm going to call it get Shopify cart. And all this function is going to be responsible for is getting the current cart. So I'm going to copy and paste some boilerplate code here where you can see we fetch the cart, we catch uh, any errors, we'll throw those errors. Otherwise, we're going to return the JSON cart. Now we can get back to our update shipping countdown. And next, we are going to need the threshold. So the cart is going to give us the total price. And now we need to, we are going to be able to get, thanks to our schema we just created, from our section.settings.free shipping countdown. We can make sure that that name is right. And then if that doesn't exist, I'm just going to set it to zero. And then if threshold is less than or equal to zero, well then I just want to return. Okay, great. Now I'm just going to calculate the difference between the total price and the threshold. So the main thing to note uh, on the Shopify um, cart API is the total price is given um, in cents. So you need to divide that by 100 to get it in dollar amount. And then lastly, going to return and I also just want to add a quick method there to make sure that I only have a round to two figures and then mount until you hit three shipping. Great. And we close out our p tag. Otherwise, we have exceeded the threshold, so we can say congratulations. You have free shipping. All right. And lastly, so this is all just setting our variable here, string of whether or not they've reached it or how much they have to go. So all we have to do at this point is actually ins insert our HTML here into the shadow DOM. So we're going to say this equals string. Okay, so now we need to go in and actually create this cart updated um, event. So if I go into cart.js and I did a little investigation and I narrowed it down to two methods that are being called here whenever the cart is being added to, removed from, or edited up or down. The first one is on the on cart update. And so all I'm going to do here is after the fetch has already happened, I'm going to emit an event here. I'm going to call it cart event, and I'm going to paste in the exact string so it matches. And then I'm going to dispatch this event to the document. Excellent. And we can copy that because we're going to add it to one more place. If I scroll down to update quantity, I'm going to do the same thing um, after the successful uh, fetch and paste it there. So now if I save that, and if I save this file as well, it's not going to work quite yet because we still need to, well first I need to finish defining our free shipping web component because I forgot, and then we need to insert that into HTML. 
So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this class within the script, and I'm going to say custom elements define free shipping countdown and use that class we just created. It should match. Perfect. Now I should be able to open up a file called, I think it's cart drawer, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So right before we start looping through the cart items right here, I am going to insert our web component. So I'm just going to wrap it in a div first. And now I can reference free shipping countdown. All right, we're almost there. Now the last thing that we need to do is reference our free shipping countdown liquid section in the theme.liquid file. So if I open up the theme.liquid file, I should find a space here that I can insert this. And I want to do it in the same place I saw that there was uh, right here. They were already met referencing the cart drawer. So I am going to render the section free shipping uh, countdown. All right, so let's give that a save. And now if we preview our store, we shouldn't see anything working yet because we have not given a threshold. So it should be returning out. Okay. So now we can navigate to the store and open up the customizer. Well, okay, and now if I click into the free shipping countdown, you'll see I have this ability here to set the amount of dollars for free shipping. So if I set it to 1,000 and hit save. Now if we cross our fingers and refresh our preview, we don't see it yet. Okay, so I opened up the inspector and I found a simple uh, mistake that we made in our shipping countdown. We are using async in one of our functions here, right here. But I failed to put, we're using await, sorry. We forgot to put async in front of the function. So let's give that a save and another refresh. And hopefully, oh, looks like there may be another place we forgot to put it. So it appears I forgot to put it in front of this function as well. We give that a save. And there was one other issue. This I misspelled. I had it written like that, <laughs> shad root instead of shadow root. And if we save that and navigate, navigate back to our preview, you'll see that it is finally working as intended. So to do a quick recap of everything going on here, the Shopify slide out cart in the new DOM theme is utilizing web components. So we built a web component within a free shipping countdown liquid file. We created the web component to have event listeners that basically call this function to get the cart anytime there's an update and then show the difference or the proximity to the free shipping threshold uh, on the cart and display it there as well, which we reference in the cart.drawer liquid file by calling our web component here. And remember, we're setting event listeners. That's how we know when this cart is being updated, which we're setting up the listeners here. And in the existing cart logic, in the update quantity and the on cart update methods, we are creating events there to communicate with our um, listeners. Now there's a few different ways that you could go about this. I utilized a section, a section liquid file that we can then come in to check out here, but you could just have easy, easily done this many different ways. Another way would be to use the configuration files and then you could come into theme settings and where we have the cart options, you could add it somewhere in here as well but I wanted to make this as easy and clear as possible to see right on the home page. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial while we've created a notice to free shipping proximity. 
uh, making it merchant friendly with the easy interface in the customizer. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, and please let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you next time.